Hey guys, this time I'm going to show you how to remove the starter motor, the balancer driven gear assembly, and then split the crankcase. Just a few final components stand between us and finally splitting the case. Let's get to it. First come off is the starter motor. It's held on by two 10mm bolts. After removing those, you need to pull the starter motor to the side to get the business end of the starter motor out of the crankcase. There will be some resistance since there is an o-ring seal. Just pull with even pressure and it should slide out. Next we need to remove the remaining gears that were talking to the timing chain. To do that, we'll first remove the chain tensioner. It's held on by a 10mm bolt. Next, the timing chain sprocket can slide right off without any trouble. The crank driven gear could slide off as well, but we need to leave it there for a minute or so so we can get the balancer driven gear assembly nut off. Speaking of, the balancer driven gear assembly is this stack of parts that sits on the splines of the balancer shaft. I don't understand why it's an assembly instead of a single component. I guess it probably has something to do with the springs? Anyhow, the service manual says to put a 3mm pin into this hole while removing, but the inner and outer gears of mine were misaligned, so I couldn't put a pin through there even if I had one. I'm not sure how my pin hole got misaligned, or why it needs to be aligned in the first place. If anyone watching this can offer an explanation, please leave a comment, I'd really like to understand this better. Anyhow, just like the other nuts on other rotating shafts, we need to make this guy hold still in order to put the loosening torque on it and I'm going to use the stuff a towel in the crankcase trick again. This is why we had to leave the crank driven gear on earlier. With the shaft anti-rotated, the 19mm nut came off without too much trouble. With the balancer driven gear assembly off, we can pull the towel out of the crankcase and pull off the crank driven gear. At this point, the two halves of the crankcase are held together by 16 8mm crankcase bolts. The crankcase bolts come in two different lengths. You need to keep track of which ones go where. Now, even though we drained the oil, there is still a decent bit in the crankcase, and this just spilled out onto my work surface. You may have noticed this gray mat that I've got on my workbench. It's a product called Pig Mat that's shockingly good at absorbing oil. I got one roll off of Amazon for about 25 bucks before I started the project. Definitely worth it if you ask me. As it turns out, my handy little engine stand is blocking the last two bolts, and incidentally, also helping hold the two halves of the crankcase together, so time to take off that engine stand. Anyhow, with the engine stand off and the last two bolts out, now we just need to overcome the adhesion from the liquid gasket seal. I couldn't get a grip anywhere, so I got out my dead blow hammer and started knocking around a bit. It seemed like I was damaging the surface of my hammer, so I swapped out for a rubber mallet. Eventually I found that the easiest way to knock the two halves apart is to lift up a little on the upper half and then repeatedly tap on the end of the crankshaft. I was pretty surprised at how easily the two halves came apart. And there you have it. The next task is to clean and dimensionally inspect all of the suspect parts and then start the rebuild. That's it for this time though. Thanks for watching.